Hi folks, welcome to another session of Gardening 101. Today we're going to talk about raised bed gardening and container gardening and the media or the soil that goes into both of them. Before we get into that subject, I want just a little bit of warning. We've had a couple nice days and whenever that happens, uh, we have folks that have a tendency to pay more attention to the thermometer than to the calendar. And we want to make sure that you pay attention to the calendar. If you recall, last April, we had more than 20 inches of snow during the month. So, you know, it's obviously too early to plant tomatoes uh, and many other garden vegetables as well. Putting plants and seeds into this really cold soil does not gain anything. And, you know, oddly enough, this is one of these years where we could probably very easily plant potatoes on Good Friday. But beyond that, I don't think I would recommend planting much. So let's talk about container gardening and about raised bed gardening. We'll start with raised bed gardening and why it exists. Uh, normally it is done because the soil is not good enough to grow vegetables well. Uh, Arizona, parts of the country where the soil is just not good, uh, the raised bed is commonly done because then we're able to establish the soil, the media that goes into it and work it out a whole lot better that way. Certainly raised gardens are popular around here as well and uh, one of the reasons they're popular is it just is easier to get to. Uh, when we have a garden that's a few inches off the ground is a whole lot easier than one that's right in the ground. Same is true with container gardening. That's why I do most of my gardening in containers because it's just simply easier. So if we have a raised bed garden, that can be, I'd like to keep it about three feet wide, no larger than four because we need to reach in from both sides. Uh, the structure can be absolutely anything you want. It should be a minimum of six inches out of the ground, six inches high, preferably higher. Uh, the higher the le you have it, the less stooping you have to uh, go in that particular aspect. It can be made out of any kind of material that you like uh, to do that. In fact, um, I spied the other day a couple of used water tanks uh, livestock tanks, uh, you know, that would do a really nice job, probably about six or eight feet long, about two and a half, three feet wide, perfect, uh, made of metal and would not rot out, you know, like wood might. So there's a number of ways you can do it, whatever you choose to do. I used to have a friend years ago who uh, spent his winters in Arizona, uh, who finally wound up doing a very, very nice business by hauling used railroad ties from Iowa to Arizona and selling them for raised gardens and then later on uh, started selling his compost that he was developing here in Iowa, hauling that to Arizona and setting it up for all these Iowans that love to go to Arizona for the nice weather during the winter, but missed their gardens. So it's a good thing to do. But you know, anything that you like, like I say, minimum of six inches, it can be three, four feet tall, as much as you like, uh, will do a nice, nice job. Uh, it's important that when you're putting it down, uh, that you destroy the grass that's underneath it. So if you're putting it out in your lawn somewhere, again, remember as much sunlight as possible, minimum of six hours a day, uh, so that everything will grow nicely for you. But we wanna get rid of any vegetation we might be setting on. Now we can, we can do the kills all that we talked about last week of just destroying the grass chemically. Uh, we can put down a, a product called Weed Barrier, which is a woven material that you'll lay down that will keep the grass from coming up through. Or you can just simply use corrugated cardboard, uh, wet it down nicely and just lay it down and then put your media on top of that. And that uh, will do just a, a nice job for you and you can handle it in that fashion. And away you go. Now containers, uh, different story. Uh, here we have to have enough room. Um, you know, typically like to have a container that's a minimum of 12 inches of diameter and a minimum of 10 feet deep. And one thing you have to be aware of, and I have a pot here. See what's missing on this pot? No hole, no drainage. 
and that's critical for container growing that you have that drainage hole or several holes there. A lot of folks like to use uh, five gallon buckets and they work great. You can grow a nice tomato plant in it. There's any number of uh, vegetables that you can do in it. But the five gallon bucket will have around here a, a little piece of plastic that will, will, if you're putting it on concrete or in any impervious um, um, surface, it will water seal, which means that water will collect in here and it will actually seal up and keep the plant, the pot from watering. So in that case, it's not only important to make holes in the bottom of the pot, but make holes in the bottom side of the pot. And that will, that will work out well. Adequate drainage is absolutely critical for container growing material. We just simply have to have a lot of way for that water to get out of the container and, and it will do a nice job. So that drainage becomes very important. Okay, now let's talk about the really important stuff, the media. Uh, garden soil in a raised bed or in a pot I, this does not work. Um, our soil in Iowa is the greatest soil in the world, wonderful for corn greens, alfalfa, but it's not good soil for gardening because there's too much clay into it. It's too tight, holds too much moisture, that type of thing. So we then have to go to a media. Now you can build your own if you wish, and I used to do this years and years ago in the greenhouse. You will go with equal parts of topsoil, fine sand, like play box sand, and peat moss or compost will do a pretty good job. Mix those together well, and they'll work pretty good in a container and in a raised garden. Beyond that, you really want to go to the soilless media. This is what we like to use. I've used it for years, it does a marvelous job. All of my containers in my garden have the soilless media in it, which is basically a composted material of a number of different kinds. It can be, you know, be composted, wood be composted, almost anything. Uh, normally has uh, some perlite in it. Perlite allows air to be present in that soil and um, gives it the softness that it needs. So please, if you're gonna use containers or a raised garden, don't use garden soil in it alone. Either modify it yourself or simply bring in the bag stuff and it'll do a nice job for you. A number of uh, materials that are available will do a good job for you. Uh, one of the things you look at, I've got a lot of 20 and 30 gallon pots in my container and I'm in my garden. I'm looking at these things when I'm filling them up and saying, holy cow, this is gonna cost a small fortune. So what I did is use some straw. I filled the, the pot about uh, half full of straw and then put soil on top, make sure I had at least 10 inches of soil on the top of that. It will do pretty well. You could use any number of things to be creative along those lines uh, to, to help you along that area. If you're in kind of a windy area, you're concerned about the pots tipping, uh, you might want to use some rock, some uh, coarse rock in the bottom. That would do a super job as well. Put the media in place and then we need to be sure that we are fertilizing that media during the season. I like to use a slow release fertilizer that I just simply sprinkle around the top of the plant as I'm done planting. When I water, that water hits that slow release fertilizer, releases minute amount of it, will last the better portion of the season and do just a super job for you. Of course, water is absolutely critical. Uh, some of these pots, when they get a big old plant in them, you have to water them daily. So, you know, again, we don't wanna drag that hose 150 feet when we do that, so have it close by. My son Ross and his wife Beth have a nice patio just outside their kitchen where they have a whole bunch of pots on it and they grow primarily leafy vegetables, uh, herbs, uh, some tomatoes of course, some peppers in there and uh, I've had some marvelous salads that Beth has made just by simply stepping out of the door and picking off of the pots that are growing out there. So it's a great thing to do. Uh, so whether you're going with a raised garden or whether you're gonna use containers, 
Uh, make sure that they're big enough, make sure they have enough drainage, uh, make sure that water is close by, make sure what you're planting, whenever you're planting it, that you're getting some fertilizer in place because most of the material that you buy in bags is pretty much inert, so we have to have that moisture there. And you'll do a great job. Hey, next time we get together, we're gonna to talk about varieties, uh, various kinds of plants that you can plant when you should be planting them and get you off and going. So until that time, do the like and the all the stuff that you know you do at the end of these videos. And I'd appreciate that very much. Till then, hey, keep on believing, won't you?